Hey everyone, Laurel here, Minnesota Zone 5A. Just want to do a little tour. Um, gosh, it's already mid-October already. The 12th, which is crazy how time flies. Um, things are still looking good, but we are going to possibly get our first overnight temperatures in the mid-30s. So some things are going to get nipped a little bit, a little bit frost nipped. Most likely, even though it's not a true frost, but one thing would be the coleus over here. I have Sedona Sunset Coleus on the left. In the middle is Golden Dreams Coleus, and on the right is Lime Time. That little grouping. Um, usually, if it gets below 40 degrees, it kind of depends on where they are, too. If they're sheltered by other plants, sometimes they make it, but usually, if it goes below 40, coleus gets nipped by the cold. They don't like that. If we're early in the season, they wouldn't die. Well, they won't die now either, but they would have time. You could cut them back and they would flush back out. But it's just going to get colder because that's the direction we're heading. So I love this salvia. This is uh, Rock and Play in the Blue salvia. I have two of them here. Um, I'm so glad I could find that at a local nursery this year. It's hard to find sometimes, but it's so vigorous. I just love it. And then the blooms, like the length of these bloom stalks are just super long. So, and very blue. And I like that they don't turn like really white. They kind of get a little bit lighter purple, dusty purple, but uh, they don't turn like white or gray and look unsightly either when the blooms are spent. So they are not hardy here. I've, I usually leave them in the ground because um, A, I don't have time to clean every single thing up in the fall because I have like 50 pots to clean up and put away but uh i'm always just hopeful that something that might be marginal will come back but last year we had an extremely warm mild winter and they did not make it so <laughs> i don't think there's a whole lot of hope for that there's a bird right now right oh there it goes they get used to me i've had a bird come and uh hop around on my head while i'm out in the garden i think they think of me just as another garden fixture which is true. I'm not, I don't, I have no plans on eating any songbirds. So, um, uh, sweet tea, hookerella, this little trio down here, really nice one. This is the Lime Time Prime Hydrangea. Again, I've said this before, so if you watch my videos, you know, but I transplanted this kind of in the early July, um, to give it more space. So a little bit of, and when you transplant something, it's almost like it's newly planted again like it has to re-establish its roots and it was already blooming and I didn't want to cut those off so but it'll be fine especially panicle hydrangeas are extremely tough I did clear out you can see some open space over here and then my sprinkler we got one tenth of an inch of rain in all of September after being like six inches above average for May June July and August um, and now we've also gotten Almost no rain for October. It sprinkled kind of for a little while today, enough to get the grass kind of soggy, but it did not penetrate. It was not enough rain to penetrate the mulch or really reach any roots of anything. So I've been sprinkling. This is what I use. I just move it to different areas, turn it on kind of low. Um, but anyways, this is, I had four Cat's Pajamas Nepeta planted in here and then a fifth one that I added. I just had to expand the edge of this garden to make room for it. And then I had a Tor birch leaf spirea in here that it did get fungal disease. It's prone to that and it defoliated. I th it would have been fine, um, but with everything growing big around it, um, I think it would just continue to get crowded out and have the same issue. So I cut that way back, dug it up and gave it to my friend. She's got lots of space in her garden where it can have lots of good air circulation. So went to a good home. That's what I love about clearance plants. It's like I can enjoy them for a while and then if they don't work out or I get tired of it or I want to try something else, it's not really a big loss. When you get a shrub on clearance, I think that one was probably like $5. It was definitely under 10. So it's not like I spent $40 on this thing and then got rid of it after a couple of years. So that's the other fun part of clearance plants. But I planted instead, this is an Anna's Magic Ball Arborvita. Um, that was on sale. If you're local, Bachman's is 25% off shrubs and evergreens, 50% off perennials right now. 
Um, but then earlier this summer, at the same time that I transplanted the hydrangea, I also planted this blue juniper. This is a Troutman juniper. Um, so I especially didn't want the spirea to get real big and then uh, crowd out this in particular. So, of course, the coleus I planted this year over here because they're annual. So um, it'll be different next year, but that's what I do to fill in space. Like next year, this uh, arborvita will still be small. It'll take a few years, of course, and they only get about a uh, foot and a half to two and a half feet tall and wide. So it'll just be, and they stay in this nice little globe shape. So it'll just kind of fill in that space. I'll have the tall things around it. I kind of want to keep this area open as long as I can and just keep planting annuals. But I have another shrub over there sticking up past the uh, salvia. This shrub will get big. So eventually it'll fill in. And in the meantime, I can have fun planting smaller annuals for color in the bare spaces. Um, this is... Opening Act Flox. Again, I cannot remember the name of these. I bought a bunch on clearance at Home Depot last year. In fact, they probably have some this year again. I've seen the, like the big pots and I just get the names all mixed up. <laughs> but I've got some echinacea over here. This is another Proven Winter Salvia. This is the Unplugged Blue. It does pretty well. Kind of like Victoria Blue. Very similar. I love this guacamole plectranthus. Again, I picked this one up on clearance late in the season and just plunked it in because I had some bare soil. Plants are the best mulch. That'll die with the frost. Same thing with this gomfrina. Um, but you can collect the seeds from these. This is atomic purple. So when they go, these are the seeds here, these papery. Let me see if there are any that are loose. Some of them just come right out. So these are all the seeds. And when you start gomfrina from a seed, what I do is I wet down a paper towel, stick a bunch of the seeds on it, just like this, fold it in half so that the seeds are kind of surrounded by a damp paper towel. And then I stick it in a plastic baggie like a sandwich bag for about a week. And then I plant, and then I pull them out and plant them. Sometimes they sprout, sometimes they don't, but just that like, that, uh, Moisture will soak sort of the outer, I don't know what it's called, outer husk or whatever of the seed that protects the germ and it uh, germinates easier. It can penetrate that like outer shell of the seed. Drift rose uh, finishing up here. Well, it's still, it's still got some blooms and some to open up, but this is its third big bloom of the summer. So, and this one yeah, this whole bloom head. It's kind of peachy pink and ages to this like more coral with white. You can see like the new buds are kind of peach. Really pretty. I like even the aged blooms. I like that kind of like mottled effect. Not a cutting rose. It's a shrub rose. So it gets these big like clusters of blooms. Very pretty, attractive foliage, super tough. Um, last year I was worried because we didn't have any snow in the winter, so the rabbits ate it down pretty darn far. But it didn't mind one bit. It just bounced right back and got even bigger, so I'm not going to worry about it this year. Um, stuff's looking kind of dry back here. Got a sedum that splits open. Probably just doesn't get enough sun back there. Maybe I'll put a ring around it next year. That's it. Excuse me. Kind of have to hiccup. <laughs> That's a little lime hydrangea. We got so much rain that these got weighted down. Typically little lime don't get weighed down for me, but they also grew really, really long, vigorous stems early on. So I think that might have been part of the issue was all that rain early on, I'm guessing, um, encouraged them to grow really long stems and that's when they get floppy because I do cut these back pretty hard. So that they have, when you cut them back hard, they have thicker, tougher stems and they're less prone to flopping when it comes to panicle hydrangeas. This is the other Anna's Magic Ball. I think this has been in the year, ground for two full years now. So you can see it just stays really compact. This one I'm sure will get a little bit bigger. It's probably about a foot, foot around right now. But turns kind of bronzy in the fall and winter color. This is the Noblesse Yarrow. You can see it just keeps blooming. Not nearly as vigorously late in the season, but 
as long as I keep cutting away some of the brown dead flowers, it'll just keep putting on those little white snowballs, little teeny white snowballs. Um, we've got some night ember sedum here. I did cut back this phlox. This was the luminary opalescent phlox. You can see the the uh, mildew that it got this year because of the moisture. This one is not prone to mildew, however. And the previous year when we've had drought, I haven't had any issues with it, but it just kept blooming and it didn't completely defoliate. So I have this one lone queenie lime red zinnia here. I'm hoping these make it through. Don't get frostbitten because I have a bunch of bloom buds coming up there. And I got one bonus bloom on my um, it's kind of aging now. It opened yesterday, I think. The Holy Grail Hardy Hibiscus there. And then right above it, you can kind of see some buds that I'm hoping open up. So just a little, a few late blooms, which is kind of fun. You can see the really beautiful fall color, though. This one is a really sort of deep, dark green purple foliage during the summer. Beautiful dark accent. Um, and then it gets this beautiful fall color, sort of orange and gold colored leaves, which is really nice. I will cut the stems back further this year. They are hollow stems, so insects can use them to overwinter. So you do it when hollow stemmed plants. One thing I learned is you do want to cut them a little bit so that the, ins like sedum is another one, so that the insects can actually access the hollow in the stem. If you leave the blooms on all of the stems, they can't really get in there. Maybe they can chew their way in some insects, I'm not sure. But that was one thing I read, I think, on the extension site. University of Minnesota is uh, cut back the stems a little ways, but leave a good length of it so that they can kind of burrow into that hollow opening. We've got just a little random assortment here. This is a um, amethyst treasure zinnia that I grew from seed. It stays compact and small, but that like pop of purple color. I've got some uh, carmine gomfrina. Stuff back here didn't do as well this year, but as I've said in previous videos, this area stayed really wet. This is diacea, diacea, diacea. White one, kind of pinkish tone to the blooms though. That was a clearance plant that I just tested. These were four clocks that seeded themselves. These are like the easiest seeds to save. You can see how big and chonky they are. They were very easy to start from seed as well. And they seed themselves all over. So you, whoop, well, they got clumsy, clumsy fingers. But they look like little grenades, these big seed things, so. And I also just learned, and maybe I'll experiment with these, that you can dig them up because they kind of have like rhizomous roots or tuberous roots. So you can also overwinter them bare root. So maybe but maybe I'll test that out with some of these. Just see. Won't hurt anything. Might learn something. The purple aster or blue aster is in full bloom. The last this is pretty much the last thing to bloom in the garden, last perennial this aster. I don't know exactly which variety it is because it was not labeled. And then we have the glorious uh, cosmos. These all self-seeded from ones I grew last year. Those are cool back there because they are almost touching the, the uh, what, eve of the garage. Some of them wilt though. I don't, I don't know why that is. I need to look that up and educate myself, but like you can see on this one here, <coughs> Like some of the branches just started wilting and then the center stock, everything just wilted. And when I examine it, there's no damage to it. So I'm not sure why they do that. Maybe they're insects or borers or something that I can't see, but I, whenever I cut them back, I don't really see any signs of that. So who knows? I also have an azalea in there that is Rosy Lights Azalea, still kind of establishing itself. And then this is my little hodgepodge pink area that I planted when my dahlias rotted and or got eaten by voles. This is probably my favorite zinnia that, I've, that I grow. It's the um, Zahara uh, salmon, double salmon maybe. Just beautiful, compact, bright blooms. <clears throat> so zinnias are always real unfussy, low maintenance. You can see I saved some of the, I plunked some of the dahlia tubers into pots just to see if I could save them. <coughs> Excuse me. 
and they are budding up. So I'm hopeful I will be able to save those tubers at least and overwinter them, hopefully have them next year. Although I've learned I'm not going to plant them back here again. And then this seeded itself. This is a purple hyacinth bean vine. Seed must have dropped at some point and germinated here and so I just let it grow. And these stakes I was using to stake up the cosmos after we had a windstorm and so it was kind of perfect. Just took that over. Vegetable garden. I'll have to uh, harvest my peppers um, tomorrow night because I think overnight tomorrow night is when we are going to get the low temperatures. So I'll just pick any of the peppers that are big enough to eat, whether they're orange, red, or green. I'll leave the small ones because again, 38 degrees, 36 degrees technically isn't a frost. So maybe they'll have a chance to grow a little bit more. Probably not, but that's okay. Um, marigolds looking beautiful. My friend makes, it's into textile arts and she makes uh, dyes, natural dyes out of plant material. So she's been learning about that. So she, I give her all the marigold heads after they start drooping when we get frost. She's also making a dye out of the hibiscus, the dried hibiscus blooms. And I also give her my carrot tops when I harvest those. I don't harvest my carrots until after we start getting frost. Um, you can harvest those real late because it takes the ground a lot longer to freeze. And even if it does freeze, it's not necessarily going to destroy your carrots. But they get sweeter, the sugars condense once it starts getting cold. So you can see I've got some good color on these guys. This orange pepper here. I keep forgetting about this cabbage. I need to harvest that. That was the one vegetable that grew in this area. I don't, I have garlic to plant, but I probably won't plant that until after everything else is done in here. And I think I'll do a set in the ground as well as in the beds again this year. You can see my carrots over here. So many strawberries and they're still producing berries. Not a ton, but well, you can see them all on this plant here. Um, but I come out here and get a few berries every time, which is nice. If the bugs don't get them first, although there aren't as many bugs around, the mosquitoes have definitely gotten better, thank goodness. That, that'll that drive you bonkers, that's for sure. Did for me this year. This is neat too. This is the Sun King Aurelia gets these little white blooms. You can kind of see the structure here, um, but they're more poofy when they're in full bloom. And then it turns into these like little berries on them. Be careful what I touch because the wasps like these. So I don't want to grab a wasp on accident or a bee. Bees are on them too. I just love this plant though. It's a great perennial. It gets huge. looks like a shrub, but it dies back to the ground every year. So it's something you can plant in an area where in the winter you need it clear, need lots of space to clear snow or whatever. I don't know how salt tolerant it is, but uh, you know, if you need bare ground in the winter, but you want a big ornamental shrub looking plant in the summer, this is one to plant. Couldn't take full sun, even in my climate, I don't think. Well, maybe, you never know, but it's more part, part sun plant, full shade to part sun. And the viburnum, I just can't get over this. So cool, these blueberries. This is, I have an all that glitters and an all that glows viburnum. This was when they used to sell them separately. I got them both on clearance. Um, but they're pollinators for each other. And you only get flowers and berries if you have a pollinator. I know the Proven Winners website says that Blue Muffin is not a pollinator for either of them, which is their other viburnum. Um, I think because they don't bloom at the same time. So they also have to bloom at the same time. So um, the other all that glitters or glows didn't bloom this year, but I'm thinking maybe my cranberry viburnum was a pollinator. And that would have been close enough. We've got another little lime hydrangea. We've got the firelight with their beautiful fall raspberry pink blooms. I have been cutting. From these. This is the perfect time to cut your hydrangeas because they're kind of, they do have some brown spots. 
um, but they kind of have that like papery texture. So if you cut them, put them in a vase with water, just let the water dry out. You don't have to keep filling it and they'll keep most of their color um, through the winter. So I just put vases of those around. I'll probably br bring a vase to my office as well. Been watering over here. I planted this, uh, I don't know, these Brenner. They did so great last year when I planted them here. And the ones over in this area too, I just watered over here. I need to cut back that long wart. Um, but they struggled this year. Just a tough year for some reason. Here's another coleus that will get nipped probably in the cold along with that one. But such is life in a cold climate. You enjoy the plants while they're here. These two planters have Alternanthera purple prints in them that I started from seed. And my zucchini's still going. I got one, one that's almost ready to harvest on the vine and then another small one, couple down there. We'll see how those do. A couple of peppers in there too. Yeah, this little, uh, this is another self-seeded. I just let it grow where it germinated. I love that like dark pink center around the yellow eye. And then there's another one over there that's self-seeded too. So that's fun. But yeah, stuff like this, I don't cut this back unless it's prone to like, I'll cut back the flocks because I don't, the fungus could overwinter on the leaves and I don't want that or the leaves could drop and then the spores could be in the soil and overwinter and reinfect it or just continue the issue in the spring. So something like this, I do cut back in the fall so that I don't overwinter any disease or insect issues. Egg, insect eggs are another one. Not on this, but on other things. Um, this Coreopsis, however, I'm just going to leave it up. It's texture in the garden in the winter, sticking out of the snow. Um, doesn't have any disease or insect issues at all. It was very healthy, not prone to that. So I'll just let that be. Same thing with the echinacea. I have had mites, which affect the blooms on my echinacea over the years. Um, those I do cut back um, because I don't want the mites to overwinter in the garden, but or their eggs. Um, but these didn't, these were healthy, so I'm gonna leave them up and the, the birds eat the seeds over the winter. It's good winter forage for them. They especially like these over here. I've got a patch of what were pink ones over here, the finches in particular land. They just land on them and just peck away at the seeds. Um, still have geraniums blooming over here too. This is the Americana uh, salmon variety. This is the um, chartreuse plants, the drops of Jupiter ornamental oregano. Oh, the squirrels are throwing pine cones at the dog next door. <laughs> uh, they're just too darn smart. Um, white flowers are Nemesia Nisia Inca variety. Those struggled with the drought, but once it dried up, they just started blooming away. We've got more white diacea over here. This is James Britannia. Um, I think this year, if it were real hot and dry, it would have done well, but it didn't do great for me again this year. So I, I mean, it was clearance. That's the best way to learn, just buy clearance plants and stick them somewhere. I don't know if I'll buy that again, though. Um, boom Chocolata Geranium. Just love that dark color. Hardy Geranium. Got some Snapdragon still blooming. These sometimes come back for me, so I don't pull these um, because they will sprout from the roots. They can be root hardy here. Um, this pink Diasia is so pretty. This one's been really full all summer. More of the Nisia Inca. Nisia there. Um, all of these seed heads. You can see the Allium. It's Millennium Allium seed heads. Those are probably my favorite. This is Bee Balm or Monarda. Um, this is a Hellenium. I think it's called Fuego. You can kind of see the color that it was. Oh, what the heck. Nice fall, sort of autumnal, like gold and burnt orange tones. Same thing, like I just said, the Echinacea. That's all winter texture, so I leave that up. It's something other than just, especially if you get a lot of snow. That sticks out of the snow and then you don't just have this white field of nothing. Um, hosta leaves I generally try and clean up 
especially if they had slug or this year the earwigs were really bad. So I don't want to overwinter any eggs in the leaves. And they just look gross. Once the leaves die, they're just kind of slimy, papery in areas. So meh. I I wait till they die back all the way though. And then you can just kind of scoop them up with your hand and they just kind of tear right out. So, um, but I have a stained glass hosta there next to the mushroom. That one is June. I'm a big fan of June. That one, it was really pretty. And this I think is halcyon blue hosta, although I've got full sun this year. Um, so all the blue burned away, but still just really nice. There's like no earwig or slug damage on that hardly at all. So and that one's been pretty solid for me over the years. This is another um, Gumfrina. I think this is the QIS purple from a mixed packet that I bought and just saved seeds um, from Johnny's. Just super low maintenance. I just had extra, so I popped it in here. Another Americana salmon geranium. And then this poor little mum. <laughs> this used to be huge, but I think last year's snowless winter, it's sort of marginally hardy here. It's come back for me for a few years. It's supposed to be annual, but last year it really died back. I think it just didn't like the either the lack of snow cover or lack of moisture or both. Um, Hakanakloa Macra, I think it is, just the plain green one. I absolutely love this. It's just so much texture and movement in the garden. It gets these beautiful seed heads, a little bit of fall color on the leaves, kind of in between these two. Now it's getting taken over. I have more peach tea hookerella. And then this is my ageratum. I can see the squirrels have been, uh, and or cats have been causing destruction here once again. But um, I have a patch of artist blue ageratum and then another patch of artist blue and then this is Aguilera sky blue. This was my test to see if there was a big difference because I can get a whole flat of this one for cheaper than I can the artist blue generally if it's still available next year from Gertens and they were indistinguishable so that's the route I'm gonna take. You can kind of see what it looks like. You don't need to deadhead because it'll keep putting up blooms and burying the old ones. But kind of early on in the season, I'll come, I'll just sit here and just kind of pick off with the little clippers some of these dried blooms. But you don't have to. Autumn frost hosta also got pretty much full sun all summer. I trimmed back, it did get burned leaves, but I trimmed back the burned ones kind of later in the season and then the sun is low enough at that point that some fresh ones popped out, but those are probably the most sun hardy hosta in my garden or sun tolerant. This patch of Persian Shield just did awesome. I don't know if any of the, I think I saw one, there was forever purple hookra down there that really died back after the winter and that's why I planted these was just to mask those. because I wasn't sure if they were gonna come back or not. So that will be a surprise, I suppose. Love this torchlight coleus. That's the one I'll be bummed about getting nipped, along with the orange ones back there behind that canna lily. Those are um, Sedona Sunset as well, next to the canna pretoria over there. This is the Trevi Fountain Lungwort. This one's just almost bulletproof, like it just does so well. And I have several seedlings from it this year, so that that's exciting. But this area just... I kind of was flying by the seat of my pants here. The only thing I planned was sort of from the ageratum over. And then I had this big open space because of the spruce trees coming out. I was going to plant a tree, but I, I just didn't have time to plant it. So I decided against it. And then I could only get huge trees, which were way too much for me to handle. But um, so I just threw a bunch of stuff in here because like the, these are, you can see the petals here, they're the leaves. This is the Biocovo hardy geranium. Really died back hard because of the excessive rainfall that we had. So once these little evolvulus, blew my mind evolvulus went on clearance, I just kind of popped those and interspersed them. So now they're kind of mingling. I don't have an icky, half dead looking patch of geraniums. I can enjoy this and the geraniums can still flush back just fine. And that evolvulus will die when we get frost or maybe freeze. That might be frost tolerant. So that's what I do. Also, I planted some of these taller things 
in an attempt to provide a little bit of shade for some of the shorter shade plants that lost their shade with the absence of the spruce trees. And that worked out well too. I love this Rudbeckia. I need to come in here and deadhead some of these so I can collect more seeds from it. Caramel mix Rudbeckia did awesome. That is an annual, so that'll die back. Definitely growing that every year. I think this is the Nicia denim Nemesia from that same series, the Nicia series. But yeah, this area just did great. Patch of Dalmatian cream foxglove on their second or third bloom cycle now, just finishing up. I did cut the earlier seed heads from it, so I have like a billion seeds and some left from last year. Canna Pretoria, about to open up the bloom. I hope it, I hope it gets to bloom. I hope it doesn't get these are a little more, they don't like frost, but they're not going to be instantly killed off necessarily if we get below 40. If we get to like 30, yeah. But I do dig up the tubers, save the whole root ball. I knock off as much soil as I can and save the root ball. Uh, my neighbors, you can see, got the fallen center leader of their oak tree cut back. Looks like they're going to leave it, see what it does. Um, they got some help from the uh, their next door neighbor. That's exciting. Got that down. They've been working on clearing the smaller branches away for for a while. That's a big project. And oak is heavy, heavy, heavy. Uh, more hostas over here. That poor. Love the apple green color on this one. That is the um, fragrant bouquet hosta. And man, the flowers live up to that name. They are so fragrant. But we got a lot of earwig damage. This year, kind of late in the year though, hostas were really loving it early on with all the rain. Um, we've got the blue drinking gourd, really got burned off. It was not at all blue this year, but unsurprising. I will, I am planning right now, I'll plan over the winter, but kind of where this uh, Sedona Sunset Coleus clump is, I think I want to plant kind of a tall, narrow evergreen. I think it would have to be either an arborvita or a yew because I think this area still gets too much shade for juniper to really do well. Um, but kind of the angle of the sun, it will give a little more shade going this direction, especially at the uh, hot afternoon time. So I think that will really help um, have a little bit of a shade patch where these plants are without having to transplant everything. But we shall see. Also, Ben, I, <laughs> you can see my pile of mulch. Menards had a broken bag sale. This is just cheap stuff. It's like brown dyed wood mulch, but it was a buck fifty. So I took all the bags that looked mostly full. Um, so I can take over this. I don't expect it to remain brown for very long. <laughs> I'm sure it will fade, but that's fine. It's just for a walking path back here. Where all the grass is back in this area. I just want it to be mulch so it doesn't have to be mowed. And then I want to dot some more tall, narrow evergreens in. This uh, DeGroote Spire Arborvita got a lot of uh, browning. I don't know if it's because I didn't give it enough water later on. This area, because it is sloped down, the soil stays very damp even when we don't get rain for a while. And this was clearance. It was 10 bucks, 20 bucks. 15, 10, 15 or $20 on clearance. So not a huge expense. Um, I have been watering it and sprinkling it so it gets like a deep soaking. So we'll see, we'll see how it does. It was looking good earlier in the season. This uh, viburnum, just absolutely beautiful fall color, but this means it's sick because it turned this red very early and that is not good. And I did get under there and kind of look at the trunk and I'm seeing some damage could be borers where this arborvita is planted. I had another um, viburnum that got attacked by borers or canker, or sometimes it's both. It's they'll get borers and then they'll develop canker from the wounds, which is a fungal fungus from the wounds where the borers dug in. So these are the ornamental cabbage that I had extras of and I just plunked back here in the only open dirt I had early on. You can see I used the tarp to clear off all the, kill off all the weedy grass. I've just been moving stuff around. This Tithonia did really great here. I wasn't sure if it would because uh, it doesn't get full sun, but 
did awesome. So I'll plant that next year. I've got this Eupatorium that I transplanted. This is sort of my little native corner. Got some things to add. This, um, the Margar Sweet Marguerite or something, Sweetheart. I don't remember. Proven Winners, super clearance. It was like a buck fifty. So I just threw it back here. All these little plants along there. I had extra elephant ear tubers. I have another overdam Calamagrostis that's going to go and complete the clump back there. Right now I just have two. Uh, been working on cutting out this edge too. It's going to have quite a ways to go yet, but it's coming along. And this area is still looking good. I did cut back these impatience because they were real they were just not looking good <laughs> they were real leggy so i just cut them back don't know if it helped but whatever um i did have to sprinkle over here but i planted the three these are, are they called paris they're proven winners um hookera that's supposed to be pretty reliable i overwintered them last year so they spent all winter all last summer all winter, all spring and summer in their little small plant cans before I planted them and they still did great and were blooming kind of bright reddish pink blooms. We've got a little patch of, this was just clearance impatience that I plunked in among the Pachysandra ground cover. I think I'll do that again. That I really enjoyed that. And this was just a multi-pack of begonias, pink and white. Bronze leaf begonias can take full sun. Greenleaf begonias, I've tr even the ones that say they can take full sun, I don't actually plant them. In f I have not had luck with them in full sun because they get they bronze out, but like in a burned looking way. The bronze leaf ones do much better. This is r the red ones that I picked out from that same multi-pack here. I don't know what went on with these red ones, if they got a little dried out or what, but they were looking just as full and then they got kind of scraggly looking, but... Begonias are not frost tolerant at all. They're pretty tender, so they're not going to like the cold temperatures either. This raspberry splash lungwort looks much better than the other one. And I'm impressed by these Japanese painted ferns because they got really full sun this year and they're still, they stayed looking good all summer. Wow, you can see, look at this. It's hard to get uh, mid season. To get weeds out of there. Look at that dandelion, that leaf. It looks like another hosta. The leaves are so big. <laughs> Once they die back, I can get in there and really dig it out. I mean, I could now, but I don't want to. And this, you can see the dichondra silver falls kind of getting caught up on the, uh, uh, oh, I got a little bloom. An extra bonus bloom. Let's see if I can get it here. The Clematis, that's Jack Manii. That's fun. I don't prune that one other than in the spring. But we've got this little mixed planter. This is the Amazon Sunset Locust Vine. Locust Vine. Really cool texture, just really and very soft, ferny. It does, I think if in some climates it gets kind of orange blooms on it, but I, I haven't had a bloom for me. But really neat looking from a hanging basket. So, and then below that I have some Solomon seal. This is two different kinds of ajuga here, planted in the ground. This is a red dragon GM. I did, that one did so well this year. Um, and Aaron from the Impatient Gardener just said the key to keeping GMs blooming is uh, deadheading. And I did that more with this one and I just kind of kept sending out bloom stalks. So I got a second one now that I've cut away from some soil so I can plant in here because I enjoyed that. Got some Jacob's Ladder back here. That is the Rainbow's End Hosta. One of my favorites. Just looks like kind of watercolor painting. Got some variegated Brunnera. I did plant. This was a sale plant too. I think it's Knight's, White Knight Alyssum. And then we've got this little patch of variegated Brunnera. These Hostas were just planted last fall, so they're very much establishing this year. I don't know what went on with this elderberry. This is the red twig elderberry. It's going to be looking right into the sun here. I'm trying to avoid that. Um, it doesn't normally defoliate like this. It usually stays leafy and gets really pretty gold fall color. But this year, this half of it just defoliated. 
and I was looking at the trunk. I don't see, at least from, of course, it's in my neighbor's yard, but looking through the fence, I can kind of lean over. I don't see any damage, so I'm not sure. Maybe there's something going on that I can't see from here, but I'm bummed because that's my shade for my little bench. It's my, like, it's like my borrowed little overhang shrub, and it's a native, native plant. You can, easy to maintain because you can cut it back real hard. So these defoliated branches have buds all over them. So I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to, you can see just buds everywhere. So I'm not going to, other than to what I would normally do to trim it, but I'm not going to cut those way back. Um, we've got Bobo hydrangeas, a little trio over here. Again, these were transplanted last fall. So they're still kind of establishing. They liked the rain this year too. And this salvia bloomed. It actually bloomed. We had a long enough season. This is an annual salvia. It's called Rockin' Golden Delicious. Um, I think it's called pine, also a common name, pineapple sage or pineapple salvia. And it's grown mainly for this bright chartreuse foliage. This is one single plant. I just bought it in a little, one of the Proven Winners, four inch base, their standard starter plant cans for annuals. And it'll say in cold climates, it blooms red, but it may not bloom because it blooms real late in the season. So it's mostly grown for foliage. I think the plant can also says it gets about one to two feet tall and wide. And uh, this bloom stock, I'm five foot 10, and this is, this is eye level for me. So at least planted in the ground. Last year I planted one in a container, expecting it to get about, a, you know, is it, appropriate sized container for a plant that would get one to two feet tall and wide and it got huge so I planted it in the ground <laughs> later on. This year I just started in the ground and man is it huge. But I'm so happy to see it bloom and if you live in a warmer climate and look at all these like side shoots. Um, last year it, the one that I had it was about to bloom and then it got killed by frost so it is definitely not hardy and it did not come back for me. But that's fun, and I got to see that bloom. Real bright red. It's kind of a cool tone red. It's not an orangey red. It's like a, I don't know if scarlet. Is that a blue red? Um, this container's looking pretty tired. <laughs> this is the Plectranthus, um, oh, what is it? Silver. Shoot, I'm forgetting now. That's one plant also, and that got enormous. I know Plectranthus can be really vigorous. I did not expect it to get this big. Silver Shield, is that it? I can't remember. It kind of looks like lamb's ear though. I love the texture, although I don't love how the leaves kind of yellow as they age. Um, also have Shiny Shoes Coleus, which I'm hoping I can find next year because I enjoyed that shiny textured purple leaves on this one. That one's fun. Would like to plant that in a sunnier location next year in its own pot. Um, I should probably just pull this out. This is the um, petunia. All petunias are tired by this time of year. Uh, Hoopla Vivid Orchid Supertunia. And it did great early on. Uh, I pruned it hard. It was looking raggedy in August. Pruned it hard. Got another nice bloom cycle. But now it's pretty much done for the year. So what I probably could do is just pull that out and rotate. Spin the container around so that this... Uh, uh, Snow Princess Alyssum is in the front. Or not. I don't know. Sometimes it's just not worth the hassle. <laughs> Especially when I'm going to be clearing this out within a couple of weeks anyways. Here are two more GM. These are, I forget the full name. I think it's Tangerine something. Orange Blooms. But the foliage just is so pretty when it's not in bloom. These are a few years old now. And this area stays very dry. This year it was nice and wet early on as everything else does, but because of these giant arborvita shrubs, this area stays really dry. So these, and these don't get all dried out and crusty looking. So big fan of those. I've got a Kahori Dianthus that just keeps blooming down there. Um, this area also got kind of bowled over by kittens when they were out here early on, when they were young, before we took them in. Um, but I do have a Dicentra, what's that one called? Pink Diamond or something. It's one of the ever-blooming ones. A Mystery Hookera that I do not have the tag for, do not remember what it was. A Poor Ghost Fern that the kittens loved wrestling in. I'm sure that will be fine. And then this Turtle Head. 
I don't know what's going on. So I have three, I think these are hot lips. Uh, Keloni, I have two of them. Uh, this one, the furthest one, I planted one year, loved it. So the following year, I planted these two. Uh, found clearance plants. This one has caught up and done beautiful. This one, granted, it did get smushed after I planted it. My mom stepped on it on accident when it only had a few branches and crushed it, but it started resprouting. The roots weren't killed, so it started resprouting from the roots. And it just, I just watered it too, and it still looks like that. So I don't have a lot of hope for that one. <laughs> Again, at least it was clearance. I tried. Honeysuckle doing great. The aphids were much, much better this year. So I'm hoping I got them under control and I won't have any issues next year. I do still see some colonies of them though. So one thing I will do is um, when the leaves fall, I will try and rake them up as much as I can so that the eggs, because they lay their eggs on the leaves, so that the eggs don't remain in the soil to hatch and then the little new aphids next year to crawl onto the plant. And then I think next year I'll be ready right off the bat with neem oil. And as soon as I see the first signs, I'll be able to spray them down. So, but much less work. Um, we've got some sedum here. This is rockin' back in black sedum. And then this is a Cleome, the first time I've grown Cleome, Senorita Rosalita, the annual from Proven Winners. And it did great looks beautiful. You can see some of my containers, especially in this corner, are looking really tired. The super tunia looking tired. The verbena doesn't. Verbena stays fresh for much longer. Um, this is the uh, black and blue salvia. It has more thinner, more flexible stems than the, what's the Purple Winters one? The rock and blue suede shoes. Um, that one I always have branches break off when we get bad storms, but this one just was not nearly as full of blooms, not nearly as vigorous. Now it looks kind of scraggly, so I don't know about that. Um, but a lot of containers, I've cleaned a couple out. Some are still looking fresh. Mezu always looks good. Even that's frost tolerant, so it'll take a freeze before that is killed off. Um, begonias. This is a surefire rose begonia. Everything's looking a little bit threadbare. A little long in the tooth. Um, some of these geraniums that are in individual pots I will overwinter. Don't know about this one. We'll see. I also have to consider now that there are going to be kittens in the house and uh, who want to get into everything. So I'm gonna have to put up shelves or something. I gotta th rethink my setup. This is a seed geranium that I started from seed. Um, love this color. Um, that is the, all I'm thinking is mojo, but that's not a seed. <laughs> Scarlet Picatee. Something geranium. Um, I might see, I have a few of these, and these are the seed pods, so I might see if the, those will go to seed. Although I don't want them to be killed by frost, because I want to bring them inside, so we'll see. This one will come inside. This is the Americana Coral. Love, love that one. And man, is it full of blooms right now. In my my little clearance planter here, I have a Dichondra Silver Falls reaching to the ground. Some French lavender. Oh, that smells so good. It's just starting to bloom. I'm going to do lavender in a pot next year. And then a uh, little, what is that called? Double Caliber Koa. That's it. Uh, dahlias blooming. Some of the iffy ones are about to open, so I'll have more tubers to save here. This one must be fairway spur, judging. I love fairway spur. That was one of my favorite colors, kind of a peachy, salmon-y color. Um, yeah, so that's doing good. A lot of this stuff over here is going to get nipped, too. I've got, I picked up some more clearance stuff from Home Depot for 50% off. We've got Jack of Diamonds, Brunnera. This did really well out in the landscape. I think I showed this last time. So I picked up some more of it. The Hookera Dolce Silver Gum Drop. A couple more. So um, I'm ready to plant those. I just have to wait. They're going to go out where annuals are now. So I'm going to wait till the annuals are killed off by frost or freeze. And then most of the rest of the stuff on the table I'm going to overwinter or attempt to overwinter anyways. This poor Persian shield. <laughs> 
This container was really hard to keep watered. I don't think Persian Shield does as well in full sun. I think it's better in a part sun, or at least if it gets afternoon shade, which this one did not. So, um, as I said, Verbena still looking great. This one just, just doesn't get that weary looking. This is the Superbena Sparkling Amethyst. And then I have a little Supertunia Bordeaux in here. I have, this is the Buttered Rum Hookerella. Also did really great for me. So once annuals die back, that will get planted out. But a lot of these containers are still looking really good. And yeah, I could start pulling them, but I just, I don't want to cut things back while they still look good. If they start looking tired and worn out, then I'll put them up, but I'm going to wait till frost kills, kills them off. So this is the Vermillionaire Kufia. Um, I'm glad I underplanted it with a sale Artemisia, or clearance one that I got late on, later on, because there's a lot of bare soil and that just never looks good in a pot. And then this is the Blood Orange Nemesia. That kind of goes in and out of blooms, it like flushes in and out of bloom. And the poor little, <laughs> I have a Calibrecoa back here, but it's now gotten taken over. Coral Sun, I think it's called Solenia Apricot Begonia. It is ticketed as being full sun. It is not full sun. Even here, it didn't even get full sun. It just got mostly full sun and it just fried and it stayed real small. So if you buy the Solenia Begonias, maybe they have other varieties that are, but that one is not. Again, I love the Meizu pouring down there. Um, we've got, I love this little. This is what I love about Carmine Gomfrina. You can see all of these blooms sticking up, really long stems for cutting, like super long stems. Um, but also it just kind of weaves its way through other plants. I have, so this is one planter here with the, I have this Dusty Miller, the Calibrecoa, and then a one um, Carmine Gomfrina. And that's kind of all spreading out over here and weaving its way in with other stuff. And then I have, I think I did two plants, but back here with this bronze leaf rose begonia, I have a pot with um, some petunias and then another set of carmine gumfrina, and they are just kind of weaving their way through everything. So such a cool texture. I love that um, you can plant some, there's something tall that you can plant kind of in front of other things because they won't block it. They'll just sort of weave their way through. Um, this hyacinth bean vine did not do great this year. Normally these get huge for me. I find they do better. They last longer if you can see the seeds. So they bloom like the one in the back. Then they get these bright purple seed pods. And then the seeds dry out. Um, if you cut, if you keep up with cutting these as the seeds dry out and lose their purple color, then it'll keep sending out new growth. So that's key with those. But then this late in the season, it's also just kind of naturally going dormant with the cool temperatures. This was one of my favorite little combinations too. This is a little Diamond Mountain Euphorbia. And I just pop that in a pot and surround it by Caladium bulbs. And I love that combo. I'll definitely repeat that next year. But the poor Caladium, they are not going to like below 40. Um, a lot of them have already started drooping because we've been in the low 40s a few nights. So they're looking tired and they won't die. You can save the bulbs from them. I'll try it again this year, even though I've failed every other year, but I'll attempt it. Um, you can dig them out. It's just that the leaves just droop and sort of die back on caladium. They are hot tropical climate plants, but the peaches look good. I love the grasses in the fall. This is Skyrocket Penicetum. It stayed really short this year. Normally it gets much taller, but it's nice and full. Good color. And then this is a Surefire Rose Begonia. And I don't know why it defoliates. Like, look at that long stem and all the leaves have fallen off. Just kind of a weird, weird one. <laughs> um, this is Angelonia. Uh, angel Face Perfectly Pink or something. It's perfectly Pink, I think. Love that. I grew that last year too. And this is one plant. It's just super vigorous. Great uh, thriller for a pot. And we've got another Canna Pretoria here. I've been cutting some of the browned leaves. 
And then this is vining a little bit more. That's the Medenia Pink um, Mandevilla. And the Strawberry Drop Coleus. This is planted in the corner of the little, I have a square planter that this uh, canna is in. So this is just one plant just spilling out everywhere that is super vigorous. But I just love all the foliage together over here. All of these Rex begonias go inside. So I'll put them in the garage. Normally I uh, transition things on the porch so that they don't just go from outside to inside so that they have a transition period. But now there are kittens on the porch. So I don't I probably have to transition them in the garage in the shed before I bring them indoors. Either that or I'll have to get a whole bunch of cloches. But I uh, um, this is the polka dot plant, Hippoestes, Hippo Pink, or Hippo Rose, Gingerland Caladium. Look at the size of that leaf. That's one of my favorites. This one I'll do again. That was Fiesta. You can see they're getting droopy in the cooler temperatures. This is a Tritoscantia that maybe, if I'm ambitious and have time, usually I can pop that out, throw it in a pot, and at least bring it to work, though, if somebody wants to try try growing it as a house plant. Sometimes I just run out, of, run out of time and space. And then this is a spider plant that I bring out every spring. I should probably top that off or repot it. Things looking good over here too. The licorice vine, silver licorice vine, very frost tolerant. That's one of the last things to die, even when we get a freeze. Elephant ear leaf is aging. I like how they, I kind of like how they look with the brown splotches though, even when they age. This Persian shield did much better in the shade, but this really is like the superstar, this uh, guacamole plectranthus. There's one plant, single plant planted right about back there, and it just kind of spread everywhere. I love this um, illumination, Browalia peeking through. I like how everything mingled over here. Did a really good job, even though it's kind of hard to get the lawnmower through. And then this is covering this, but there's another Rex begonia on that stand with Dichondra Silver Falls coming down. I didn't expect the Persian Shield to get quite as big. <laughs> you would have seen the spiller a little bit more, but oh well. More Rex begonias down here that will go inside. I have tried overwintering this Plectranthus and unsuccessfully, so. I can get it for pretty cheap every year, so that's what I'll do. Sweet potato vine is another one that does not like cold. Um, so I'm expecting these to get fried. Sometimes they don't because it's somewhat insulated over here. You know, you've got the two buildings, those absorb heat and hold it overnight. Um, the concrete kind of sheltered in here. So sometimes things don't get nipped as bad as they do out in the grass. This is Star Coleus, Wicked Witch, one, one single plant for that whole huge thing. And it didn't start blooming till the end of August. I have grown that before in full sun. This is in full shade. And man, did it do well. I will grow that again for sure in full shade. I even like kind of is in the way of my car a little bit when I back out. <laughs> and then below that, that's my favorite, that little sweet potato vine underneath the impatience there. That is the Medusa. Sweet potato vine. Um, also love this plectrant. This is one of my favorites. There are just so many different varieties. This is the cerveza and lime. I got some starter plants to overwinter. These I won't overwinter. Um, but it smells like limeade. It feels like velvet. It's got that beautiful texture to it. It just stays this neat kind of tidy habit like this. Um, does best in full sun, but it can grow in part shade too. What a nice accent. So really loving this. This planter is looking real tired too. But I, I like this combination a lot. I just threw these together. This is the uh, Mini Me Watermelon Coleus. I love how small it stays. The um, Lismachia, well, I think it's called Waikiki Sunset trailer. And then um, Cerveza and Lime Plectranthus. That was a really nice combination. Got some things over here. I did pick up a candy corn spirea. Again, that'll go where annuals are now, so I just gotta wait for those to die. I got another Ice Ballet Carex. I 
think I'll plant that up front where some of the other ones died. This is the GM I picked up, and then this is a Stokes Aster, one of the new ones. Totally stoked Riptide. I've never grown that before. And it came with a free dandelion gift with purchase. So again, those will go back where I currently have annuals planted, so I'll get those in the ground once the annuals, annuals die off. You can see this uh, elephant ear was underplanted with caladium, but they got all droopy, so I cut them. I'll dig out those bulbs. Same thing with the elephant ear. I dig out, there's big old tubers under there, or bulbs, so I dig those out. But yeah, things just still look nice. Um, got some ferns that I have to plant. This Rex begonia will go indoors. I got those for $2. Up potted them, and they'll be house plants for the winter. Um, and then this over here, we've got an, uh, mum, non-hardy mum. Um, I just overwinter those on my porch. They die back. I've got another one here. I've had these for a few years now, so yeah. And then another uh, coleus. That'll get nipped, although that one's looking pretty tired at this point, too. So, all right, I'll end it there. I was going up to the front garden, but this, this is getting mighty, mighty long. So maybe I'll show that another day. And just enjoy the stuff back here for now. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Hope you're enjoying your autumn. And please subscribe.